Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and let's say we have this compound over here. And next, we are going to treat it with a base. What sort of a base? Doesn't matter for the moment. What does matter to us is that there are two possible products that we can get here, because if we have a secondary alkyl halide that we have over here, and we are treating it with a base, we are going to be doing the E2 reaction, so that's going to be an elimination reaction, and we are going to get two different products. One product is going to be the result of eliminating HBr, where we are going to be using this hydrogen. Let's call it hydrogen A. And if I'm going to be using my hydrogen A, I'm going to get this product. Well, likewise, we also have three hydrogen B over here. I'm not going to be showing all of them, I'm going to show only one of them. But if I were to eliminate one of those guys, I'm going to get a product that looks like this. So we have two possible alkenes that are going to be the result of this elimination reaction. The one on the left side has a more substituted double bond, so that is something that we are going to be calling a Zaitsev product. And I know that this is a more substituted double bond, because when I look at the substituents or other groups on my double double bond, I have one, two, three other carbons sitting on my double bond, so it is a tri-substituted double bond. Now, applying the same logic, the double bond on the right side, this one, is going to be a less substituted double bond, and in this case we know that this is a less substituted double bond compared to the one on the right, because now our double bond is only connected to one other carbon, and this type of a product we call a Hoffman product. So. This review is something that you have already seen before, so nothing new so far, right? Now, how do we know which of the two products is going to be our major? Well, the choice of a base in this case is going to be paramount for us. So if we are using a smaller base, typically smaller base is going to favor the Zaitsev product, and bulkier base is typically going to favor the Hoffman product. So for instance, if I use sodium ethoxide, which is a smaller base, we are going to get about 70% of the Zaitsev product and roughly 30% of the Hoffman product. And if I were to use terbutoxide, like let's say potassium terbutoxide, which is a bulky base, well in that case we are going to see roughly 28% of the Zaitsev product and about 72% of the Hoffman product. And the way we typically explain that is that bulkier bases, they are more sensitive towards the steric hindrances that you might have in your molecule, so they tend to give the less substituted product product because it is physically easier for them to reach whatever hydrogen is less sterically hindered, so they are going to go after that one first, and because the elimination reactions are typically kinetically controlled, we are going to end up with the uh, less substituted product because that forms just faster because of the easier approach towards the less substituted hydrogen. Now, bearing all the information that I had on the previous page, let's look at this reaction over here. We have a secondary alkyl halide over here, the position of my bromine is at the secondary carbon, and we have a bulky base again, so we have two possible elimination products. If I pull off my HA, then I'm going to get the product that looks like this, and that would be what we will refer to as the Zaitsev product, and if I pull off the proton B, I'm going to get the product that looks like that, which is going to be my Hoffman product. The double bond on the left side is connected to one, two, three groups, the double bond on the right is only connected to one, two groups, so everything fits. The more substituted on the left is Zaitsev, the less substituted on the right is the Hoffman product. And if I were to ask you for the major product here, you would look at the bulky base and you would say that the most likely major product here is going to be the Hoffman product, because that gives us the less substituted double bond due to the less steric hindrances around the hydrogen B over here, so that one is physically easier to grab, so end of story, Hoffman is our major product here. Then we do the experiment, and to our greatest surprise, the major product that we have here is actually product A, the Zaitsev product, the more substituted double bond, even though we are using the bulkier base. So what's going on here? So is everything that we've been teaching you is a one giant lie, or is there something missing? 
Are we not noticing something? And the important thing here to remember is that the smaller cycles that have uh, less than nine atoms, they cannot do the full flip around. They cannot do a 360 degree rotation around sigma bonds within the molecule itself, within the cycle itself. And because of that, the amount of stereokindrons that the cycle can cause is somewhat limited. So if I were to draw a reactive chair conformation in which my bromine over here is in the axial position, then the two antiperiplanar hydrogens that I have that will be physically able to undergo the reaction here are going to be my hydrogen A and it's also going to be my hydrogen B over here like that. Now, when my third butoxide is going to be coming over, let's say I will draw my third butoxide like this, then that third butoxide can come in and either grab the hydrogen A or it can grab the hydrogen B. And because our ring does not have a free 360 degree rotation, then the amount of steric hindrance that we have around hydrogen A from the perspective from which the uh, terbutoxide has to be attacking and the amount of steric hindrance that we have around hydrogen B, again, from the perspective from where the terbutoxide is attacking, is roughly the same. This methyl group that I have over here, well, that guy is looking in the opposite direction from my hydrogen, so it physically does not cause too much steric hindrance. And because we do not have full 360 degree rotation around bonds, the rest of the ring does not cause much of the steric hindrance either. And since here the differences in the steric hindrances on the left and on the right are negligible, we can choose a more stable product as our final product, and that one is going to become our major product in this case. So remember, the more degrees of freedom you have in your molecule, the more your molecule can wiggle around and the more your molecule can rotate around the single bonds, the more the steric hindrances are going to be a factor in whatever chemistry you are trying to do there. However, if your molecule has less degrees of freedom because of the stereochemistry, because of how it can be uh, potentially locked up into a cyclic compound, or maybe it has certain conformations that it's locked into, because of all of those factors, the steric hindrances might not play a big role. And that's one of the cases over here. Of course, in most classes, we are still going to teach you that it's going to be the Hoffman product, and most instructors are going to say that the Hoffman product over here is going to be the major product, which is experimentally incorrect. However, uh, within the scope of the sophomore organic chemistry, typically we don't want to overload you with the details, so depending on the nature of your class and how many details you are going to be covering in your class, I am willing to bet that in 99% of sophomore organic chemistry classes, B would be considered the correct answer for something like that. However, reality sometimes is a little bit different from what we teach in class due to the oversimplifications that we have in organic chemistry, so that is one of those wonderful examples. And that's all I have for you guys for today. Thank you for watching. Leave me your questions and feedback in the comments below. If you learned something new today, hit that like button to promote this video and help more students see it. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates. Watch this video next and I will see you tomorrow.